Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. Welcome to Classic Friday on Monday. So I guess it's Class -a Monday. Doesn't have quite the same ring to it. Following up my review of Sergeant Slaughter version 4, I want to look at the G.I. Joe classified series Sergeant Slaughter. Finally, we have an official G.I. Joe Sergeant Slaughter in the 6-inch scale. Let's start by looking at the box. This is the no plastic box, so there is not a window showing the action figure. Instead, we have this awesome Adam Riches artwork. Adam Riches is well known for doing G.I. Joe packaging art, and he gives us Sergeant Slaughter in multiple art styles. On the side of the box, we have a close-up of Sergeant Slaughter with some sky strikers reflected in his sunglasses. This is number 53 in the classified series, and on the back of the box, instead of having that generic poster style artwork, we have some photos of the toy. We would normally see this through the window pane on the front, but since this box doesn't have that, we get photographs on the back. Since this is not to scale, it tells us how tall Tall it is. Classified figures average six inches tall, but this one is a little taller, as Sergeant Slaughter should be, at 6.75 inches or 171.3 millimeters. There are these symbols which represent his specialties. These are repeated on the side of the box. This symbol means he got a five star Yelp review. This is the logo for Cobra Kai Karate. He learned the Cobra Clutch at Cobra Kai. This is a tree in Minecraft, and this is the logo of Prudential Insurance. Let's open the box and take the figure out. I have opened this figure before, so the figure and the accessories are loose in there. There is a tray for the figure, and there is a box for the accessories. Here is Sergeant Slaughter out of the box, looking very much like Sergeant Slaughter the Wrestler. This figure is based on version 2 of Sergeant Slaughter from 1986. This is the one that came with the Triple T, and it's this version that showed up in the G.I. Joe cartoon, so it would be the most recognizable to G.I. Joe fans. Let's start looking at the accessories by looking at the most unique accessory, this extremely tiny Sergeant Slaughter micro figure this is a Sergeant Slaughter action figure for your Sergeant Slaughter action figure. It is incredibly tiny. It's much smaller than even the smallest previous micro figures. It is on a G.I. Joe card with some artwork, and it has the generic G.I. Joe star logo on the back. And yes, you can take this off the card. It is not sealed, so you can take it out. You can get an idea of the scale of this micro figure by comparing it to the size of my hand. It is so small if you inhale deeply near it, it will go up your nostril and get lodged in your lung. It is microscopic. Despite that, it has some pretty good detail and paint applications. It's an amazingly detailed figure for this size. Now I'm going to quickly put this back in the packaging because that's my only hope of not losing it. Let's move on to the next accessory. Perhaps the most important accessory, he has a campaign hat. It is brown with a darker brown band. He has a gold rank insignia that I believe is supposed to be a staff sergeant, but it's hard to tell because it is so tiny. It is removable. You can take it off. The hat is made of a soft, flexible plastic, which I like very much. It fits well on the head and does not fall off too easily. Next, we have the sunglasses. They have silver lenses and brown frames, and they are removable. And somehow, without pegs or clips or anything, these do stay on the figure fairly well, much better than you would expect. These sunglasses are very small. These will probably be frequently lost accessories. They are somewhat flexible flexible, but I wouldn't flex those too much. I would be concerned about breaking them. Mostly, I'm just impressed at how they are able to stay on the figure pretty well. Next, we have the whistle. The whistle is removable. It was just sculpted on to the vintage action figures, but you can take this one off. It has a brown band and a gold whistle, and this, of course, is for his drill instructor role, so he can signal the start and stop of drills and training. The next accessory is very reminiscent of a vintage accessory. It's this swagger stick or baton, and this is much like what the vintage figure came with. Basically the same accessory but larger and with more detail. It fits well in the hand. The accessory is a brown stick with a black grip and a gold cap, 
And then there's this black curly Q thing at the other end, which I think is supposed to be like a leather strap in motion. And I understand what they're going for here. I'm just not a fan of this little extension here on the bottom. The version 2 Sergeant Slaughter only included the baton accessories, so the classified figure already comes with a lot more. The next accessory is the only weapon, this assault rifle. It is in black plastic. It has some paint applications. It has some brown furniture. This looks like a modified and updated AK-47. None of the vintage Sergeant Slaughter action figures came with anything like this. It has a couple removable parts. You can remove this piece, which I'm interpreting as a laser spotter, and the magazine is also removable. This is not a unique accessory. This is the same assault rifle that came with the classified Cobra officer, also in black plastic. There are some minor differences between the two. It looks like there's a, an extra paint application on the Sergeant Slaughter rifle. It has a brown grip, whereas the Cobra officer rifle has the grip unpainted. Also, the brown paint is a little lighter on the Cobra officer and darker for the Sergeant Slaughter rifle. Even with these minor changes, this does feel like something Thing that was just thrown in because Sergeant Slaughter needed an extra accessory. The final accessories, if you can call them that, is the extra hands. This figure came with eight hands, six loose and two on the figure. So you get four hand poses. You get each of these four hand poses for both the right and the left hand. I'll show you how this works. Right now, for the right hand, I have the gripping hand so he can hold accessories, but I can take that out. Each hand has a stem that fits into a hole on the wrist and I can replace it with the right hand in the grabbing pose. Right now for the left hand I have the fist hand for punching but I can remove that and replace it with the pointing left hand with the index finger extended for when he wants to make his point. The hand poses you get for both the right and the left hand are the gripping hand for holding accessories the grabbing hand in kind of a claw pose, the fist for punching or doing fist bumps, and the pointing finger. I'm not a fan of these extra hands. I don't really like accessories that don't go on the figure and just rattle around in the box or get permanently lost, but I know a lot of collectors do like them. They give you some other posing options. I call this one the Michael Jackson. Let's take a look at the articulation for Sergeant Slaughter. He has classified articulation, which is excellent. He has a ball jointed head and a swivel neck, so he has excellent range of motion at the head. He can swing his arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder. He has a cut at the upper bicep with a swivel, so he can swivel at the upper arm. He has double jointed elbows. He has a swivel at the wrist and in and out hinges at the wrist. That's excellent. He has butterfly joints at the shoulders, and those are not too tight. They actually work pretty good. He has a hinge at the rib cage, so he has a bit of an ab crunch. He has a ball and socket joint at the waist so he can have a pretty good range of motion at the waist uh, around and up and down. He has a leg split. He can move his legs forward at the hip and back a little bit, not as much. He has a swivel at the thigh cut. He has double jointed knees. The top joint on this one is very tight. He has a swivel at the boot cut and he has hinged and rocker ankles. Let's look at the figure itself. And as mentioned earlier, Sergeant Slaughter is tall for a classified figure. Standing him next to Duke, he is about half a head taller and that is as it should be. Sergeant Slaughter is a big guy, and his action figure should reflect that. The face is an excellent likeness of a younger Robert Remus, the wrestler who played Sergeant Slaughter. He has a prominent chin and a brown mustache and brown hair. That hairline is perhaps a little generous. Also, this figure is very muscular with lots of ripped muscles all over him. It's important to keep in mind that this figure is based on the G G.I. Joe character of Sergeant Slaughter, so this is not a literal representation of the physique of the real Sergeant Slaughter. The rest of the details are pretty simple, but they are exactly what they need to be for the character. He has a black tank top with a texture on it. He has black wristbands. He has a white belt with a gold belt buckle. On the version 1 figure, this had the Marine Corps emblem, but this is a plain gold belt buckle. As with the version 2 figure, the legs have a 
a camouflage pattern. He has green BDU trousers with a brown camouflage pattern. He also has texture. I like how they add texture to these figures, makes them feel more realistic. He has pockets on the outside of his thighs. He has green knee pads. He has jungle boots with green canvas sides and green laces and black toes, heels, and soles. If these legs look familiar, they were also used on Tiger Force Outback. The same legs, different colors. I don't really mind this reuse of parts for classified figures. These cost-cutting measures mean they can give us more figures, which I am for. I would have a bigger problem with it if they literally reused parts without changing anything anything, but here they have different colors and Outback has some accessories on the legs. So even though they have reused parts, they don't look identical. Looking at Sergeant Slaughter overall, I like this figure. This is one of my favorite classified figures so far. It's not as flashy as, say, Serpentor, which has a lot of gold and minute details and came with a small vehicle, but the details on here are exactly what you need for Sergeant Slaughter. If you started adding more, the figure would be less recognizable recognizable as Sergeant Slaughter. This was a premium figure, so they tried to give us some extra accessories, but I can live without the bonus hands, and the assault rifle does nothing. I like the hat and the sunglasses and the whistle and the baton, and if that's all it came with, I would be happy. So where does the micro figure fit in? It's fine. I like it well enough. It's meta. It's a reference to Sergeant Slaughter as a G.I. Joe action figure, and it's okay. It looks good, but I just don't know what I'm going to do with it. That was my review of G.I. Joe Classified Series Sergeant Slaughter. It's Class of Friday on Monday. If you haven't checked it out yet, please watch my review of Sergeant Slaughter version 4 with special guest Sergeant Slaughter's Slaughterhouse. Also, please give this video a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe to the YouTube channel and share this video. You can find me on social media on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. If you like the channel and you'd like to support the channel, Patreon is a great way to do it, you can get some special perks and get your name in videos like the names you see scrolling on the screen right now. Thank you for watching. I'll be back with more G.I. Joe. And until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.